Ruibos is a broom-like member of the legume family of plants growing in South Africa's Finbos. The generic name comes from the plant Calica tombillosa, Aspalathos in Greek. This plant has very similar growth and flowers to the Ruibos plant. The specific name Linearis comes from the plant's linear growing structure and needle-like leaves. The leaves are used to make a herbal tea called Ruibos or bush tea. The product has been popular in southern Africa for generations and is now consumed in many countries. It is sometimes spelled Ruibos in accordance with the old Dutch etymology. Production Ruibos is usually grown in a small area in the region of the Western Cape province of South Africa. Generally, the leaves are oxidized, a process often referred to as fermentation in accordance with tea processing terminology. This process produces the distinctive reddish-brown color of Ruibos and enhances the flavor. Unoxidized green Ruibos is also produced, but the more demanding production process for green Ruibos makes it more expensive than traditional Ruibos. It carries a malty and slightly grassy flavor somewhat different from its red counterpart. Use In South Africa, it is common to prepare Ruibos tea in the same manner as black tea and add milk and sugar to taste. Other methods include a slice of lemon and using honey instead of sugar to sweeten. Several coffee shops in South Africa have recently begun to sell red espresso, which is concentrated Ruibo served and presented in the style of ordinary espresso. This has given rise to Ruibo's based variations of coffee drinks such as red lats and red cappuccinos. Iced tea made from Ruibos has recently been introduced in South Africa, Australia, and the United States. A variant of a London fog, known as a Cape Town fog, can also be made using Ruibo steeped in steamed milk with vanilla syrup. Nutritional and Health Benefits Ruibos is becoming more popular in Western countries, particularly among health-conscious consumers, due to its high level of antioxidants such as aspalathin and nuthophagin, its lack of caffeine, and its low tannin levels compared to fully oxidized black tea or unoxidized green tea leaves. Ruibos also contains a number of phenolic compounds, including flavonols, flavones, flavonones, and dihydrochilcones. Ruibos is purported to assist with nervous tension, allergies and digestive problems. Ruibos tea has been shown to inhibit in vitro activity of xanthine oxidase, but an in vivo study has not been conducted. Xanthine oxidase plays a role in conversion of purine to uric acid in humans and reducing the activity of exo could limit uric acid production, which would aid in treatment of gout. In in vitro tests only, for the specific concentration tested, the infusion was shown to be less than half as effective as allopurinol, which is the drug typically prescribed to inhibit exo activity in treating gout. Two flavonoids found in Ruibos, quercetin and luteolin, have been known to have cancer-fighting qualities. Ruibos does not contain the antioxidant epigallocatechin 3 gallate found in green tea. Traditional medicinal uses of Ruibos in South Africa include alleviating infantile colic, allergies, asthma and dermatological problems. Scientific experiment, human studies of Ruibos are scarce in scientific literature. Animal studies show that Ruibos has potent antioxidant, immune modulating and chemo preventive effects. A review found no documentation of adverse side effects of consuming Ruibos tea. A recent report identified a possible case of hepatotoxicity due to Ruibos consumption, but concluded that further study was needed as the herbal tea may have been contaminated by another hepatotoxic compound, and or that the subject may have had a genetic predisposition to react negatively to one of the other bioactive properties found in the tea. A study found that multiple compounds abundant in Ruibos tea had mild estrogenic activity, although the exact concentration was not determined, it is often claimed that green Ruibos has a higher antioxidant capacity than fully oxidized Ruibos. However, one study, using two different methods of measuring antioxidant activity, found conflicting data, with green Ruibos showing more activity under one measure, and less activity using the other. The study also found conflicting data when comparing both forms of Ruibos to black, green, and earlong tea, although it consistently found both forms to have less activity than green tea. In 2010, 
11 poison dart bogs were raised at WWT Slumbridge by amphibian keepers in pint glasses of water, topped up with shop bought Ruibos tea. Ruibos was used because it contains antioxidants with antifungal properties. This successfully protected the frogs against infection by chytridiomycosis. In 2011, researchers conducted a trial to test the effects of Ruibos on various biological markers considered to be indicative of risk for cardiovascular disease and other degenerative diseases. A high intake of Ruibos tea resulted in significant reductions in lipid peroxidation, LDL cholesterol, triglycerides, and an increase in HDL cholesterol levels compared with the control group. The researchers concluded that Ruibos lowered risk factors. Grading Ruibos grades are largely related to the percentage needle, or leaf to stem content in the mix. A higher leaf content will result in a darker liquor, richer flavor and less dusty aftertaste. The high-grade Ruibos is exported and does not reach local markets, with major consumers being EU, particularly Germany, where it is used in creating flavored blends for loose-leaf tea markets. In development within South Africa are a small number of specialty tea companies producing similar blends. History Through the 17th and 18th centuries, European travelers and botanists visiting the Cedarburg region in South Africa commented on the profusion of good plants for curative purposes. In 1772, Swedish naturalist Carl Thunberg noted that the country people made tea from a plant related to Ruibos or Red Bush. Traditionally, the local people would climb the mountains and cut the fine needle-like leaves from wild Ruibos plants. They then rolled the bunches of leaves into hessian bags and brought them down the steep slopes on the backs of donkeys. The leaves were then chopped with axes and bruised with hammers, before being left to dry in the sun. The Dutch settlers to the Cape developed Ruibos as an alternative to black tea, an expensive commodity for the settlers who relied on supply ships from Europe. In 1904, Benjamin Ginsberg, a Russian Jewish settler to the Cape, riding in the remote mountains, became fascinated with this wild tea. He ran a wide variety of experiments at Rondegat Farm, finally perfecting the curing of Ruibos. He simulated the traditional Chinese method of making very fine kiaman, by fermenting the tea in barrels, covered in wet, hessian sacking that replicates the effects of bamboo baskets. In the 1930s, Ginsberg persuaded local doctor and Rhodes scholar Dr. Lafras Nortier to experiment with cultivation of the plant. Lafras Nortier cultivated the first plants at Clawn William on the Klein Cleefwis farm. The tiny seeds were difficult to obtain as they dispersed as soon as the pods cracked, and would not germinate without scarifying. Lafras Nortier paid the local villagers, some of whom were his patients, to collect seeds. An aged koi woman came again and again, receiving a shilling for each matchbox filled with seed. She had found an unusual seed source, having chanced upon ants dragging seed, she followed them back to their nest and, on breaking it open, found a granary. The attempts by Drive Lafras Nortia were ultimately successful, which led Ginsberg to encourage local farmers to cultivate the plant in the hope that it would become a profitable venture. Klein Cleefwis became a tea farm, and within ten years the price of seeds soared to an astounding a £80 a pound, the most expensive vegetable seed in the world. Today the seed is gathered by special sifting processes, and Klein Cleefwis is now a guest farm. Since then, Ruibos has grown in popularity in South Africa, and has also gained considerable momentum in the worldwide market. A growing number of brand name tea companies sell this tea either by itself or as a component in an increasing variety of blends. U.S. Trademark Controversy In 1994, Burke International registered the name Ruibos with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, thus establishing a monopoly on the name in the United States at a time when it was virtually unknown there. When the plant later entered more widespread use, Burke demanded that companies either pay fees for use of the name, or cease its use. In 2005, the American Herbal Products Association and a number of import companies succeeded in defeating the trademark through petitions and lawsuits. After losing one of the cases, Burke surrendered the name to the public domain. Legal protection of the name Ruibos, if passed by the Parliament of South Africa 
the Intellectual Property Laws Amendment Bill of 2008 will provide for the protection and restriction on commercial use of the name Ruibos in that country. Similar legislation already exists in Europe. This is despite Ruibos South Africa's decision to contest the Burke trademark on the grounds that Ruibos is a generic term, rather than claiming it as a geographic indication. Threat from climate change the Ruibos plant is endemic to a small part of the western coast of the Western Cape province of South Africa, forming part of the fragile Finbos biome. It grows in a symbiotic relationship with local microorganisms, and past attempts to grow Ruibos outside this area, in places as far afield as the United States, Australia and China, have all failed. Now, Climate change may threaten the future survival of the plant and the R600 million Ruibos industry. Increasing temperatures and decreasing rainfall may result in the extinction of the Ruibos plant within the next century. See also, Honeybush, References External links, South African Ruibos Council, South African Medical Research Council Research Findings, The ZA Show, Episode 23-November 16, 2005, Discussion about Ruibos, 25 minutes into the show.